Hey guys, welcome on into Happy Hour. This is the pint-sized version of Drinks with Binks, where we catch up with some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment over the most newsworthy stories of the week. And of course, that is the 2020 World Series, which we saw the Dodgers win over the Rays this week. And I'm very fortunate to be able to welcome in San Francisco Giants manager and my former colleague from Fox Sports 1 in a different life, Gabe Kapler, coming to us from a beautiful Los Angeles right now. Gabe, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Julie. I'm in a park in uh, in Inglewood, California, just off the 405. But uh, really, really glad to see you and glad to have a conversation today. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, I've seen you and you've had a very interesting career since we were both at FS1. And, and you're with the Giants now. You guys played through the pandemic. What has this year sort of been like for you from a manager's perspective? I mean, a lot of it was managing things that were happening off the field, um, as you might imagine. Uh, COVID was front and center, keeping our players safe, healthy, and strong through following the protocols that Major League Baseball had put into place What was front and center. Um, and so, you know, between that, a lot of the social justice challenges that we had um, and, and a nation that, that is, is struggling right now, uh, baseball at times actually took a back seat. It uh, didn't mean that we didn't focus all of our attention on trying to win baseball games. Of course we did. And I thought Major League Baseball put a tremendous product out on the field for the entirety of the 2020 season. Um, and at the same time, there were a lot of things that were happening, um, some within our control and some without, uh, some outside of our control. Right. And on that topic, you know, you, you mentioned so many of the things outside of baseball. And one of them was uh, your support for Black Lives Matters, which was which was very pivotal and very um, prominent. What was sort of the reaction when you did kneel for the anthem in support of Black Lives Matters? It was a, a mixed reaction, as as you might imagine. Um, I certainly wasn't alone uh, in my support of, of Black Lives Matter. And, and I think, you know, throughout the country, we saw in, in various sports uh, quite a bit of support uh, thrown in, in that direction. And I was really proud of the way um, professional athletes and leaders use their platforms this season to try to create some change. Definitely. And and I was thinking of getting to these questions sort of later on, but, uh, you know, since they're forefront right now, the election, of course, is next week. We're seeing a lot of players, as you mentioned, using their platforms to be vocal, to to express their views and and sort of be you know, there is no stick to sports anymore, which is good because everything is very much intertwined. And how do you feel about uh, athletes using their platforms? And like, what do you expect maybe in, in the next coming weeks? Yeah, no, I, I think that this is a, a critical time for us to use our platforms to encourage people to use their voices. And it, it's, it's not quite as important um, which side people come out on because um, it's, it's their job to decide you know, who they want to support in this election. Uh, but what's most important is that, that we push them to the polls and uh, we use this opportunity to say that, that we are going to vote. And, and when I say we, I mean the, the sports industry um, and, and leaders within, within baseball and, and that uh, we, we really encourage people to get out there to the polls and, and use their voices. Definitely. Uh, and you have such a huge opportunity with the platforms that you guys have. Unfortunately, I'm Canadian. I cannot vote, but I encourage everyone out there to listen to Gabe and everyone else to get out to the polls um, and make it a very big priority in your life. And speaking of priorities, we were all watching the World Series last week. Um, and I mean, by the last week, I mean this week. I don't even know what day it is anymore because of this <laughs> pandemic has been going on forever. Uh, we saw the Dodgers win. They are also a team you worked for not that long ago, also a division rival. From a manager's perspective, when you watch them win the World Series, like what's something that maybe about this team on the field that you pine for, that you wish you had? Well, I think one thing that the Dodgers do especially well is they keep coming at you uh, with, with their entire lineup of, of guys that will grind at bats. So even if at the end of that at bat, it's a strikeout or, or a fly ball or a ground ball, it's still been a lot of work for the pitcher. So uh, by the time you get into the, the fourth or the fifth inning, that pitcher has worked so hard and has expended so much energy that he might not be at, at his best. And so up and down the Dodgers lineup in the seven, eight, and nine hole, those guys can uh, work a walk. They can put the ball in the gap. They can, they can take you deep. And it's just relentless. So they have mix and match options that can come off the bench and hurt you as well. And um, I think we're moving in that direction in San Francisco. We have a lot of work to do, 
Uh, and it's, it's not the exact model, but, it, but there are some things about what they have done and um, that, that, are, that are really impressive. Uh, yes, definitely. And especially sort of getting rid of the demons that we saw they've had in the World Series in past years. And they're set up for success for many years down the road now at this point. Um, but obviously, one of the biggest stories, of course, is with Justin Turner having COVID, being diagnosed during the game um, and, you know, celebrating with his teammates. For all of us that don't know what it's like inside that that sort of MLB bubble, it was getting a test inconclusive. Um, how sort of uh, uh, prominent was that? Like, did that happen often? It, it happened from time to time, and and it was it was always uh, a bit confusing. But the one thing I'll say is that every situation, um, every moment that came up felt brand new with respect to to COVID, and there was always so much that we we didn't know. Um, and we were, we were constantly kind of, uh, trying to hit a moving target because we had new information all the time. And, um, so I, I really feel for, for the challenges that the Dodgers face there at the very end. Right. Yeah. Because I, I think many of us didn't really realize that you could get an inconclusive test and then play in the game and sort of find out that you're positive. Uh, what's sort of your takeaway about the fact like how it was handled because it has come under a lot of scrutiny of of sort of who who is responsible for what happened with Justin Turner celebrating on the field at the end. Yeah, what, one thing that I, that I always try to practice, Julie, is um, an awareness that I don't know what's happening behind somebody else's curtain. Um, and so, you know, just like um, people who are analyzing the San Francisco Giants and and the decisions that we make are working with um, limited information relative to what we have in the clubhouse. I know that's true for other organizations as well. So what, what I'd say, and, and I'd say this, you know, um, pretty confidently is I'm guessing that the Dodgers have, the Dodgers and, and the people that were in the ballpark that they have way more information than I'm privy to. So I'll just kind of sit on the sidelines and say, I, well, I don't know. Well, that was very political there, Gabe. You know how to, you yeah, are a former TV analyst. It's just curious it, because I think now we're wondering, like, you know, who, who's the adult? Like, who's the one that says, hey, you shouldn't do this? And is it, do you police yourself? Is it MLB's responsibility? Is it the Dodgers? Like, where does the onus lie in a situation like that? Yeah. And, and you know, I'm, I'm just going to kind of, you know, fall back on, on a similar response here. And so, you know, the one thing that, that I'll point out, I think you're probably very well aware of, is that now I get to be a manager and not an analyst. So I don't I, I can I can sit back and, and watch things unfold and and kind of um, appreciate that. I just don't I don't know. OK, you don't know in terms of, yeah, like where like if say let's let's say say this was for, you know, you were you guys were dealing with this situation as a manager, not as an analyst. How would you deal with that situation in hypothetical? Yeah, hypothetically, I'd, I'd probably want to have a lot more information oh, than, than, I have, than I have right okay, now. Right. No, no, this is, <laughs> this is I, 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 Julie, you know, like this isn't me like trying to, to dodge, dodge yeah. a question. I really, and this is like as genuine as I can be. I know that that when I read one of the national writers articles or or I'm watching um, a, a sports talk show and, and, and I'm seeing people analyzing the situation, I always remember that that there's there's more to this story than that's being written right now. So before I sort of start to, to take positions on these kind of matters, I want to let the whole thing play out. I know there's a lot more information that, that's coming in all of these situations. Right. And so now you want to talk about like different, you know, moves in, in baseball games and things like that. Like those things have already happened. So I'm happy to, to kind of share anything that, that you'd you, like to talk about in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, what would you what do you think? Um, we still will maybe learn about this situation uh, as a society. Cause I think we're all, it's sort of a little bit like a mirroring of, of what's going on in the world right now. But what do you think, what else do you think that we will uncover about this situation? I don't know. I, I, um, I'm very comfortable saying that. Okay. Um, well, you, you and I, I, this chess match is very good. Uh, <laughs> uh, trying to figure out where the onus lies on coronavirus in MLB is, is, you know, a topic of discussion and I appreciate you. Um, yeah, of course. You know, no, I, what you can on it. No, and no, I, I totally understand the, the, the line of questioning. I totally understand why it's important that people, um, have these discussions that the health and the, and the safety 
of um, not just our athletes, but um, the country is, is very, very important right now. And so, of course, it's going to have a, a spotlight shined on. OK, so you mentioned um, on the field, you have the analyst perspective when you are in what way have you used your your previous experience maybe to your advantage as it pertains to the san francisco giants i think you know one way it was helpful to be an analyst on fox and 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 think about um you know various game strategies by way of example or, or player acquisition uh, was just to kind of see it from a big picture perspective so now I get to kind of hone in on on our games and, and pay very close attention to those. But, you know, when I was, um, you know, working with Fox, I got to, to look at all of the games um, across the country every single day. And so that gave me just kind of a wide ranging perspective. And um, I guess one thing that was really helpful is it helped me um, see other other managers in action um, and, and see their their various styles. So that was actually kind of enjoyable as I watched this postseason unfold is um you know, just kind of managing the game along with the, the guys that were in the dugouts when, you know, from afar, even though we, we, we desperately wanted to be in those dugouts as well. Of course. And you were very close to doing that in your first year as manager. What would you what would maybe stands out about Dave Roberts from a, a manager perspective when you're watching him that 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 either you that either you like or or, or that just is unique? Yeah. No, one of the things uh, I, I like about Doc is that he's constantly interacting with his players Um I think that he's taking every opportunity to instill confidence in them. And look, I've known I've known Dave for a really long time. We we go way back to uh, playing for the, the Jacksonville Suns together in, in 1998, and then obviously we, we won a World Series together in, in 2004 with the Red Sox. And then, you know, with the Dodgers, I was I was their farm director from you know 14 through through 17. So uh, you know, I've I've gotten to know Doc very well over the years. I think one of the things that he does a really good job at is instilling confidence in his players. Right. And being a part of working with the farm team, like for those years, uh, in what way maybe then do you sort of feel a little bit of connection to this World Series, having worked with the team that you sort of help create in a way? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, the, the first part of the emotion that, that, that you feel watching the World Series and, and watching the playoffs is, pushing to get there and, and, you know, making adjustments along the way to, to figure out how to be in the postseason perennial, perennially, um, year in, year out, be fighting for the National League West title, year in, year out, uh, be, be in the postseason. So once you, you leave that aside, I can tell you that, that watching the World Series and seeing Julio Urias and, and Corey Seager and Jock Peterson and a, a lot of players um, that, that I knew very well, I guess I'm just really happy to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. This is independent of my my feeling as, as a San Francisco Giants manager. <laughs> like I just want to make that very clear. Yeah, you, you different can still, hats. You can, yeah, you can still be be happy mm -hmm. for for individuals and and happy for their success and and still you know, be driving hard towards that outcome for your for your own club. Of course. Yes. I think that uh, most sort of uh, most people would understand that there's many different feelings with different situations you've been in. And just on the Giants front, uh, you know, you guys made history this year with uh, Alyssa Nakin and being the first full time MLB coach. In what way do you guys hope you have an influence on the rest of the baseball world? I think the, the most important way we can have an influence is continue to look for ways to um, diversify our, our staff um, and I think Major League Baseball sports in general have have an obligation to put women um, and and people of color into uh, leadership positions and 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 create decision making roles for people who have you know all sorts of backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, but in partic but in particular right now um, I think women are, are are not represented enough and, and black people are not represented enough in, in decision making positions in, in, in sports. So we need to continue to push towards that. With respect to Alyssa, um, she can do whatever she wants in this game. Uh, she's especially talented and driven, an incredible connector. Um, and, and probably can, can fit in anywhere on a, on a major league coaching staff. What were some of the reactions from maybe some of your peers or other managers or front offices um, in terms of having women have a more prominent role in the sport? Yeah, no, I think there's a, a lot of support in, in our effort to, to make that happen. Um, and, you know, it's not going to happen all at once, but if we make it central to our hiring practices, 
you know, every single off season, I, I think we have a chance to make a real difference. Um, I, I think you know, players were incredibly responsive this, this year to Alyssa. Um, so I think it, it's a, it's a good springboard to do more and to do more quickly. And I'll let you go, but for the Giants fans out there who have just been listening to this waiting for, um, what is the one thing that you uh, are focused on during this off season right now to be able to improve for next year? Uh, I think the one thing that we can do is focus as much attention on player development in the off season as we do in spring training. I think oftentimes in baseball, we say, well, we're going to get to spring training and then we're going to do all of these cool things to help these players get better. Would you have this like three months between now and, and February? Um, it's a critical three months. So I think oftentimes teams lose connection with their players um, and they think that they can just let let them go off and, and do their thing. Now, um, I'm all for autonomy. I'm all for giving players space during the offseason, but it's also an incredible player development um, window. So I think the most important thing we can do is stay focused on that. Okay. And sorry, one more before I let you go. Um, you know, you've held manager positions at different clubs. What's something maybe you took from your experience with the Phillies that has helped you with the Giants? Yeah. So I, I think in Philadelphia, I was I was really excited about every little strategic and, and, and tactical advantage um, without really fully understanding that some of those like marginal advantages came came with a cost. So by way of example, if you you pinch hit for a player early in a game, you might get a marginal upgrade with the pinch hitter that that you're using. And at the same time, you might be removing just a little bit of confidence. So I think in year one with Philadelphia, it's a little bit colder, you know, in my in in the way that I that I went about that. Year two, I, I really did make make some adjustments in terms of like warming up to the fact that, you know, a human being is going to be impacted by by this decision. And so last year in, in San Francisco, I think I'd, I'd really taken some some steps forward in that regard. But it's a constant um, adjustment process. And I'm going to keep working on that um, to kind of strike the, the balance between um, tactical advantages and confidence for, for players. Well, Gabe, I really appreciate you taking the time here today. All the hard, hard hitting questions, no pun intended here on happy hour drinks with thanks. Um, and keep safe out there and we'll look forward to seeing you, you as well. next season. 